I couldn't then put that trust into anybody else or any authorities, but then I, I let my walls down and get, put it into him under the understanding that he had this pear shape that he was a part of and he worked with other people and that he had helped over 800 people. And your pear shaped charity that you set up on the 1st of April? The 1st of April you set that up, didn't you? The 1st of April you set that up, didn't you? The 1st of April you set that up, didn't you? Sorry, I've got the pictures. Are you going to deny that again? Hi, this is Freedom Talk Radio. This is Jules, and this is the new show. Uh, this is uh, 7.30 at GMT time in London and I welcome you to the new show which is based on uh, psychology and psychological abuse. We'll be looking at various different things uh, throughout the, uh, the, the episodes and talking to some very interesting people um, and basically going through some, some concepts and stuff that is, is, uh, is there for everyone in their everyday life and they're not able to uh, turn around and see these things, uh, but I assure you they're there. Um, so uh, hopefully throughout the show uh, we're going to be looking at some new concepts for people to try out, um, to recognise and things that are happening in authority, some severe um, behaviours that are very concerning and uh, we've got a very interesting individual um, who will be coming on the show later and uh, uh, her name is Katie. And we're going to be talking through a lot of the psychological behaviours that, that actually go on during a uh, sort of a uh, an incident with the authorities. And as I say, we'll be taking you through the uh, experiences of, of different individuals and talking about the psychology and the uh, the type of abuses that are actually used uh, by the authorities in shocking and, uh, and, and very nasty instances. So uh, with that, what I'm going to do is, is uh, play some music for you now, and uh, this is You've Got the Love. Uh, and so we're now going to uh, go through a bit of a run-through of, um, of who I am and my experiences and the, uh, the way I've actually come to uh, discover what was uh, uh, prolific in my life. and. Uh, basically through my own experiences with dealing with different types of personality types. And I kept finding myself in certain instances with uh, people that would uh, constantly uh, lie, falsely accuse around me, um, abusive relationships one after the other, um, people that I seemed to be sort of attracted to and kept finding myself in uh, certain uh, incidences. And uh, this led me into some, some very kind of um, daunting predicaments where um, I find myself uh, on the receiving end of being exploited, uh, losing homes, um, having businesses sort of taken out from underneath me, and um, and more incident, uh, more of a case of an incident with uh, my my own daughter, um, and being placed into a position of um, being manipulated into and uh, and set up into a set of incidences which were traumatic to say the least. Uh, and to find myself then placed with um, uh, predicaments with courts and the uh, the authorities, and this for me was very concerning. Um, not only because of the, uh, the the authorities being brought in, but what I found was the uh, the, the authorities in their in their different types completely turned on me. And uh, what I actually realised was is that um, uh, after a sort of a uh, short interlude of being very traumatised and finding out that I was um, in a position of where I uh, couldn't make any progress with the authorities. They seemed to be set on I was a bad person and me not being able to work this out. Um, I found myself um, sort of trying to investigate what was going on more and more. And, uh, and so I started to look into what was called narcissism and covering people uh, who had um, sociopathy and psychopathy uh, traits and uh, it opened a whole new world for me and, uh, and through all this and this is sort of ingestion of research is I came across uh, what was prolifically in, in, in my experience uh, a whole set of behaviours and, uh, and, and patterns that I was recognising that were happening 
happening to me and the types of behaviours I was putting up with um, that I couldn't recognise and had to question and found myself always on the receiving end of having behaviours turned against me and these boiled down to, again, me always losing out, me seeming to be with erratic people who were extremely nasty and abusive to me, uh, but I always ended up on the receiving end of, of these bad behaviours. And so with this I started to look into this more and thinking that something had to be done about this and to realise that basically what was actually happening is, is I was in uh, psychologically abusive relationships and my knowledge of psychological abuse at the time uh, was absolutely minimal um, and uh, I myself was uh, very emotionally sensitive and believed that everybody else had this, uh, this empathy and this uh, emotional sensitivity for other things, caring for animals, uh, on different levels. But uh, what I actually found out was that the, uh, the, there are people who live amongst us who have uh, no emotional integrity and they also have no emotional uh, empathy for other people. And it gives them a completely different concept and a way of living, which they benefit from, uh, from our naivety. And so I started to look into this and start to speak to social workers and people involved in my court case to find that uh, I've so got a very firm door closed in my, in, in my face. There was no talking about such uh, manipulative behaviours. There was nothing um, that's mentioned about false accusations. If I turned around and tried to explain the situations that I was being manipulated into and how I'd only been doing the right thing and I couldn't find out how I was facing such severe uh, false accusations. Um, I, I went through every channel. I searched every charity. I spoke to the NSPCC, I spoke to mental health people, uh, all regarding these behaviours and, and not being able to understand how, uh, with me being honest and uh, being open and doing everything that was right for my daughter, that everything was being placed in the, in the hands of my uh, ex-partner. And, and, and basically I was receiving a closed door. And I was, I was also involved with through my own sort of spiritual beliefs, uh, a, a, a spiritual uh, church, and what I found out later was, was actually what is called a, a therapy cult, and uh, basically inducing people into a sort of set of behaviours which is um, a religious belief, and I recognised a lot of these behaviours and patterns uh, echoed through again what I'd received, putting two and two together, coming out with four, and recognising that this was a repetitive thing, uh, I realised that I was more susceptible than, than most people to this kind of thing and so my research took me further and uh, a, a very nice guy called Ian Hawthorne who ran the Cult Information Centre and uh, this was created in, uh, in England and spoke with him. Uh, the guy had basically set up uh, uh, Cult Information Centres all around the Commonwealth and other international countries and had received uh, no complaints, he'd been helping people coming out of cults. He had a few enemies he believed that were from the cults, but the, the organisation was shut down with one complaint and uh, very, very shockingly disappeared as a self-sufficient, uh, well-funded charity that was doing remarkably well and doing really good things for people. And my recognition was that through, uh, through my own research and what I was finding out about relationship psychological abuse and how people were dependent in their relationship, how people uh, weren't able to turn around and actually uh, acknowledge that they, they were being abused, that uh, these same behaviours and the same brainwashing, the same type of uh, being in a fog and not really understanding what's going on with people around them, uh, worked very uh, significantly in, in lines with the patterns of these cults. And from talking to Mr. Hawthorne, uh, he basically turned around and said that I'd been, managed to pick up a lot of the patterns. Uh, remarkably well in such a short time and he was quite in, quite in, uh, in, impressed as it were and so uh, with his disappearance and me looking for what I couldn't believe which was no charity which is involved in recognition or helping psychological abuse or dealing with uh, personality disordered uh, victims as I set about doing my own research and setting things up for myself so uh, with that I then went massively into research. I was literally researching 18 hours a day. Uh, I was The things I was uncovering were becoming more and more scary. I was finding things 
that uh, the, there were such things as uh, disorders and syndromes which were being published in new uh, mental health catalogues, what's called the DSMD-5, and there was uh, the, the new, new diagnosis of what was called narcissistic victimized syndrome. And I looked into this, uh, which actually came from the help of mine in the UK, uh, a very helpful guy who uh, put me onto this. And through researching this and going into uh, support groups for people that suffered from narcissistic victimized syndrome, I uh, realized that I very shortly came sort of well equipped with the knowledge I'd rec uh, received with problems uh, from the behaviors I'd received and started to very, very quickly realize that the erratic dysfunctional behaviors, the abusive behaviors, and the, uh, the false accusations and being provoked and being upset uh, were actually very well timed with other people being around uh, from people I believed were uh, were there for me at the same time as me being there for them. And I went through the traumas of actually realizing that the people I was having relationships weren't actually capable of love. They were just basically uh, very empty, unemotional people who were uh, incapable of love and were only basically in relationships for exploitation, seeing what they could get and taking what they could get. And in particular, one personality type, which I, I soon recognized, which was what's called a malignant narcissist, which is very, very close on to a psychopath. And a lot of people will actually argue that they, they are the same. Um, from my own experience of, of, of actually meeting and investigating other psychopathic people, uh, there is a, a, a vast difference in, in, the, in the behaviors that they actually portray and that they, ha they don't have a, uh, a psychopath won't have a, a fear for themselves or a, a concern for themselves. They won't enter a, a, a conflict or something which will endanger them, but they're far more likely to do that uh, on, on a resentment basis than somebody who's a narcissistic person. Uh, they've, they've actually got a concern for themselves, but they are so self-absorbed, there's no concern for anybody else, not even their own children. So basically, I, I realized I, the large part of my life had been spent uh, <coughs> with these, these character types, my sort of uh, selfless side of me, where I worked hard uh, and grafted to uh, put food on the table, to pay for uh, housing, to pay for rent, to pay for... Uh, a prospective life of, of being able to buy a home was put into uh, sort of into, into test and for which every time I, I, I put myself into this I ended up on the receiving end of uh, doors slammed in my face uh, empty pockets and given my marching orders um, and even having the police called on me for things I hadn't done and such and so forth the my 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 concerns uh, were Going, as I went through my research were basically almost re-traumatizing me as I started to realize the predicaments I'd not just placed myself in, I'd placed my daughter in as well, in that I'd had a relationship with someone who was extremely abusive, who had passed me my daughter at a time when I believed that my daughter was suffering at her mum's home, and uh, my daughter's word was far more reliable than, than her mother's, and this was, was spun around on me with with her mother turning around and passing me my daughter, basically get me to drop everything, including my work, the house project I was with, my relationship I was with, to be able to have my daughter to get her out of these circumstances, and to find myself placed in a position where uh, I, w I was asked to, to be retained in a place where there was no housing. And the uh, expectations put on me put me into this uh, predicament where I then had my daughter snatched off me found court papers being delivered within days, uh, just over Christmas, with my daughter crying for saying she didn't want to go back to her mum's at all, and me talk, talking and coercing her into going back to her mum's house uh, for the Christmas, which was uh, coerced on the fact that we uh, talked her into the fact that she would receive some presents, with me still trying to help develop her mum's relationship with my daughter, and me disagreeing with my daughter that her mum was upsetting her on purpose and was telling her up on purpose and perceiving that a, a six-year-old child's uh, opinion was, uh, wasn't so trustable as an adult, uh, 
and unfortunately I was fooled. My daughter was taken from me and the outcome was that the social services all turned on me, the courts turned on me, they induced uh, trauma symptoms and anxiety attacks on myself by not only believing the lies but actually corresponding with them, exaggerating with, with them when I was proving the lies were wrong and actually getting the police involved to turn around and prove, prove that I'd not had uh, prior police involvement which involved any aggression which was part and parcel of my accusations and the, the police turned around and notified the social workers that these were all lies. These lies they put in the courts. The social workers refused to, uh, uh, to make any references regarding police contact with themselves and everything went straight forward in, with me being the bad guy and I found myself on the uh, even more on the end of the receiving uh, line with the social services as I started to complain and put in complaints about lies, uh, ignoring me on the telephone. Uh, then came strong suggestions that I then had mental health issues because I was making complaints, even though I had my daughter recorded uh, for being abused and the social services refused to listen to her being abused. And so this then made me realise that something was severely wrong, not only with um, personality uh, disordered people within society, that things were hidden for these people, but also they were promoted and the children, well, in, in my case, uh, my child was being placed in the house of a narcissistic, uh, abusive parent who had a previous record for being uh, abusive to her children. Uh, and she'd been warned by myself that if I knew that she abused the children again, I would report her. She knew this and then manipulated it to the point where she actually abused my daughter to get me to uh, to report her, having previously turned around and told the social services that I was paranoid and that I accused her of things and basically made me look the fool and had me down as, as being a mental health concern. And your pear-shaped charity that you set up on the 1st of April. First of April, you set that up, didn't you? No. Sorry, I've got the pictures. Are you going to deny that again? Last year, you set that pear shaped child. But when you tried to kill my sister, no, that's my sister. That would be fair to say it's completely psychological. He was saying also that. On the side of it, he could be my advocate, and the authorities, the local authorities, was taking any kind of advocacy service away from me. For example, parent partnership, who I had, because they were out in the social services for what they were doing to my child. So, therefore, I wasn't able to access any advocacy, and when he came in and said that he could advocate on behalf of me under pear shape, I accepted it, because he was nothing to do with part of it was part of these groups as far as I knew. He, he knew Patrick very well as how he was explaining it to me. He then was bringing in people, which I understand now to be social psychology, is bringing in people that are kind of well known to get me to like him more. But the main difficulty I had was dealing with my sister's relationship um, and trying to give my sister's advice. But for, for 10 years or so, being your sister and being such a close relative, um, it was difficult. But then... I didn't have anybody to speak to about how it was affecting me and how it was upsetting me. Um, and this is where Julian decided to say that, like, this is where Julian was coming in asking me to explain it all to him. And it was causing conflict in a way that I started to slowly not call my sister anymore, um, not contact her anymore. And by the August, it got to the point where she, she rang me and said, did Julian ask you not to contact me or not to keep in contact with me? And I said, yes, he's asked me to stay away from you. Um, and that's what he kept doing, is asking me to stay away from my sister. But, again, me and my sister are the only close ones out of my family. Um, and how I see it is so that we can pursue in towards our case. Um, a lot of the conflict was going on, and that's between the June... It was to put me straight away onto radio show as part of um, boosting ego, is how I see it, is trying to get you to go onto the radio show to explain your story to people um, and then all of a sudden you, you don't know what's going on with it but it's a sidetrack of the help that he's supposed to be saying that he's giving you so 
there was backwards and forwards emails going on. I was getting concerned with the emails because Julian was bringing up certain things that was kind of making it look like I needed to be sectioned. Be sectioned. Be sectioned. Be sectioned. Be sectioned. Um, from my own experience of, of, of actually meeting and investigating other psychopathic people, uh, there is a... Um, from my own experience of, of, of actually meeting and investigating other psychopathic people. Um, from my own experience of, of, of actually meeting and investigating other psychopathic people, one personality type, which I, I soon recognised, which was what's called a malignant narcissist, which is very, very close on to a psychopath, and a lot of people are actually argue that they, they are the same. Um, from my own experience of, of, of actually meeting and investigating other psychopathic people, uh, there is a, a vast difference in, in, the, in the behaviours that they actually portray.